company A, their complete job description for company A could be one way, full of different keywords. Uh, PepsiCo is another famous one for that. They use titles and buzzwords and other job descriptions and label their internal culture so different than company B would. So it really depends. My advice would be to use that job description and look at the key bank job description. And key bank is here. You may want to ask them if they know how. They benchmark that. But make sure a lot of those key words and those requirements, if they're asking for hardcore skills and you have those, make sure they are intertwined into your resume content. Very, very important. Another way to find out keywords is you use keywords all the time. Google search. Going to conduct a job search on Indeed.com, great site, Indeed.com. If you go on there, try it. Financial analyst, put it in there. See what comes up. Those are all based on keywords. And that will give you a good benchmark of what is the most popular and what isn't. That's really what my industry does in many ways. We benchmark what are the most popular buzzwords and keywords for a particular profession, and we just intertwine those into the writing process. OK, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Hi. Hi, Susan. My name is Hart Barbia, and thank you for your presentation. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, I had a quick question about uh, putting uh, bullet points for my work experience. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what would be my average bullet points in work experience which I should put in my resume? You mean how many altogether? If, how many you're using? How many bullet points in each mm -hmm. work experience should I put in? Five to six is appropriate. Okay. Um, you know, it depends how many achievements you've had. I've had executives where we've had eight, but that's executive. In general, you know, four to six is about average. And when you write those bullet points, make sure common fallacy that, or a common error most people make is they put the achievement down, which is fantastic, you know, increase sales by 25% doing blah, blah, blah. But they don't tell anybody how you did it. Or you know, manufacturing rep, uh, increase production by 55%. Tell me how you did it because that is something they need to know. So I go about four to six. If you have them, great. Four to six. Go. Oh, don't no, go One ahead. more question. Mm -hmm. uh, there are jobs which are related to my, I'm a, uh, I'm a MBA and mm -hmm. uh, my major is finance. So when I go up there in Indeed or even Monster, there, there is same jobs, financial analyst, but they all have different kind of, different kinds of, uh, of uh, things which you have to do there. Mm -hmm. So one financial analyst job would be different from the other because their work, uh, uh, work skills are different for, for both of mm -hmm. them. So in my resume, when I put, put my work experience, do I need to customize it according to the job which they want or it should be the same one for all the jobs which I put in on the resume on Monster or even Indeed? Excellent question. And customize. You have to customize. You will never write a resume that meets every, that every job description. It's impossible. As I said, company A may be different than company B is a huge problem. And it doesn't matter the level. I have executives come to me and, well, this is what I want, Susan. I, I'm a chief executive officer, and I want to target this industry. OK, that's what we did. I developed a resume that uses the majority of the keywords that are probably the most popular, about a 95% hit rate on that. But keep in mind, if you go to a recruiter and they ask you, uh, change this, change this, do it. Because those recruiters work for that company. They don't work for you. They work for the company. Their job is to secure a great candidate. And if they know what they're hiring and what they need, and they ask you to change your resume, do it. If you see a position that is different at Coca-Cola than it is PepsiCo, customize. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hi. That was one of my questions. <laughs> the other is um, gaps in work history mm -hmm. and other faux pas. You don't want to flaunt this in terms of failure, but if you follow typical resume formats, there are the holes. How mm -hmm. do you put positive spins on gaps in time, mm -hmm. gaps in history, someone mm -hmm. messes up, doesn't finish school. Mm -hmm. How can you still have the candidate shine and pass through? 
on paper when it's not their strongest suit? Excellent question. Just had a candidate uh, about two weeks ago I worked with, a senior level vice president, and she worked for a company for 10 years and early on. Then she left, and then she's been with her new company for another 10 years. But between that, she had a three-year gap. And she said, Susan, the reason I left that first company, and I don't want to get into it on a resume, is because the ethical practices were so bad. I was so worried about a lawsuit. I had to leave there. What do I do? I said, well, what did you do when you left? She said, you know, I decided to go to school, and I took some coursework, just in things that I was interested in. Photography had nothing to do with her job. That's what we filled it with. We filled it with a full-time student, took professional development coursework. We didn't have to say photography. We just said professional development coursework. It's better to document something, whether it's a sabbatical. I've had people taking care of sick children, uh, sick parents that have had to take a year or two off of work. It's OK to put that in there. People in the hiring process are human. If you get into that interview and that HR person sees that you took a two-year sabbatical to take care of an ill parent or a child who has a disability, they're human. And if they don't understand that, you don't really want to work for them, right? I mean, people are people. People are human. It's OK to be human. Um, in terms of education, I think, is an important thing to address on that because a lot of individuals will uh, pursue education, maybe not complete it, Sales reps will come to me, a pharmaceutical rep maybe, for instance, and say, I have the four-year degree, went on to get my master's degree, but I didn't complete it. What do I do? Well, how many years did you complete? Well, maybe a year. Okay, well, then let's place that you went to Case Western Reserve University, uh, completed MBA coursework. It's okay. You didn't graduate, but it's okay to say you did attend that. Now, on the flip side, if you have an associate's degree and a bachelor's degree and an MBA, it's not really necessary to put that associate's degree on there. If you have a degree from Cleveland State University and you obtained your undergrad at CSU and you did maybe a couple years of that at a different college, you really don't need to put that on there. Just aim to where, only document where you actually graduated from. That's the most important thing. Can I answer? Okay. Susan, that, that about wraps it up for this okay. session. We have people some time to talk and mingle. You'll be around for a little bit longer. I will. I'll be back there. If anybody has questions that you didn't feel comfortable asking in the open, um, nothing silly. I hear it all. So feel free to approach me. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. We'll take about a 15-minute break and get started on the next session.